Hey guys, what's up? It's Coach Tech here once again, and I have a pillow on my couch because it's not that comfortable. But anyway, collection update time. Uh, right, jumping right in, let's get these two fucking games out of the way first. Fucking piece of... Right. Yeah. We party you and Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Sushi 2000 fucking whatever. I don't care. I, I had the exact same experience with both of these games, right? I sat down with my Wii U gamepad to play my Wii U games, and I couldn't play my Wii U games without having at least one Wii Remote active, okay? Now, this is more of an issue with Mario and Sonic, I think, than Wii Party U, but isn't this kind of, like, you know, downplaying the gamepad a wee bit if you're just going to stick with the fucking Wii Remote? I don't know. I mean... I got this, and I was like, uh, I was impressed by the price. It was 35 quid, and you got a friggin' Wii Remote with Wii Motion Plus built in. I, you can never have too many of those, if you ask me. So, that I was glad to get. But yeah, I sat down, and I literally could not be arsed to reach over for a Wii Remote in order to play the actual mini games. The same with this, you know? I just could not be fucked. Um, now, granted, I Mario and Sonic I will be playing um, momentarily, you know, because I really want to try out the online. I, I'm guessing it's going to suck, but I just want to see how online, how the Wii U handles online. Not that I'm going to use it that much, but I was just overly curious. So, that was kind of my reason for buying both of these games. Um, bit of a regret purchase, I guess, but I guess there'll be something to it, and... Oh my god. For ages zero and up... God, you, 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 I, <laughs> you guys thought it was insulting, you know, buying a three and up game. You know, like, oh, this is for kids, rah, rah, rah. Try a fucking zero and up game. This is a game for kids, for folk that aren't even born yet. Holy shit. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. Um, fuck those games, yeah. Next one, right. Let's move on to something much more positive here, okay? Now, I don't know what it was, right, but... During this week, I had this incredible urge to play some Metroidvania Castlevania, okay? Now, the Castlevania series as a whole, um, I, have very, I have a very weird relationship with. On one hand, I adore it. I really adore it. But, I don't know. I wouldn't put it in, like, any... I wouldn't put any of the games in, like, my top favorite games of all time. And I don't get that, right? Uh, but, yeah, more so the Metroidvania-style games than the... Um, linear other sort of games you know um symphony of the night excellent the three games on the nintendo ds sublime i think all of those games are better than symphony of the night to be honest and i thought to myself why the fuck haven't i played the trilogy on the game boy advance yet so i resulted in getting these two and this is a nifty little double pack for some reason i wasn't that fussed in buying them individually being a collector i you'd think i was but i don't know i guess that's my sort of like lazy attitude towards this series i guess but and you know what? It's weird. I started off with... This is just called Castlevania, by the way, but it's actually called Castlevania Circle of Moon. I don't know why it's called this like this. It's weird. But I was playing this, played it for a good six hours or so, got 70% through, and then it was weird. I just all of a sudden decided, you know what? I don't want to play anymore. So I went on to friggin' uh, Aria of Sorrow, which was the third game in the trilogy. Um, this is actually the first game, like, Dawn of Sorrow on the P DS was a, a sequel to this. So I was, I knew who the characters were, and I was quite interested to see how they all originated in that. And I got 70% through this in one sitting, by the way. I was adoring this one. Like, very much so. More so than the uh, Circle of Moon. But again, I just stopped for whatever fucking reason. I don't know why. I just did. Uh, but yeah, despite my sort of weird attitude towards it, guys, Metroidvania Castlevania is seriously something I adore to bits. And I'm very... I was really mad about that fucking 3DS Castlevania game. Fuck that game. Konami, make something else like these, all right? That's, that's what I want, that's for sure. And I think it would be excellent. But yeah, Castlevania. Right, next we have... <sighs> Professor Lane and the Azran Legacy. Right, now I want to do a full video on this when I beat it, actually. But I'll just say right now that it's exactly what I was fucking expecting, you know. I don't think this game's going to set my world on fire. I can't, it was... I, I already did a video on Professor Layton, but yeah. It's a series that just doesn't really do much for me. Even though I 
played it this far into the series. I played all the games in order. I even own, own the film on Blu-ray. Um, it's just never been a series that have, that's done a lot for me. Uh, but this is going to be this is the last game in the series, interestingly enough. So I'm definitely going to be sure to play all the way through and experience the uh, series finale and shit. So yeah, whatever, whatever. Professor Layton, cool. Uh, still really looking forward to that crossover game with uh, Phoenix Wright and his turn. Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton, though that that is like, oh, I want that so bad. Right. Next, we have a game that I've not played yet. Um, the Gilded Fate Paradox, or is it the Guided? It's the Guided Fate Paradox, I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, this is one of those, like, um, uh, Miss America RPGs that they're sort of bringing out at the end of the PS3 life cycle. I've already showed you guys, uh, Time and Eternity in Disgaea 2. Disgaea D2, I should say, sorry. And, I don't know, I've not played any of them yet. And, you guys know what my stance on strategy RPGs, you know... I've I've kind of I've kind of rethought about it, you know, because I was playing fucking Fire Emblem Awakening on my 3DS. Superb fucking game, brilliant, but I couldn't even play it, and I don't know why I'm uh, annoys me so much. So basically, my attitude now is I'm gonna keep buying strategy RPGs, of which this is one, by the way, and I'm gonna find that game that's gonna make me fall in love with the genre. Will it be this one? Who knows, but I'll be sure to get around to playing it eventually because it does seem to have a really cute art style and it was getting really good reviews as well. So, yeah, definitely check this out if you get the chance. And obviously, like, support Ness because they are a brilliant publisher, by the way. Very like them a lot. So, yeah. Right, I may, I may as well show off these next two games together. Uh, here we have Super Princess Peach and The Legendary Starfy, made by the same people, incidentally. Um, Super Princess Peach, I'm actually playing through this the new. I don't know what it is, guys. I don't know what type of gamer this makes me. But the idea of playing as Peach in Mario games fascinates me. You know, not not your fucking, like, Mario Kart or Mario Party or that. I'm talking, like, main series games, you know? Um, Peach was always my favourite character to play in Super Mario Bros. 2 when I was younger, you know? I played Zora all the time because her fucking flying ability was amazing. And I'm really looking forward to playing as her in Super Mario 3D uh, World uh, this month, you know, she's, she's probably going to be the character I play as the most. Um, but yeah, and then there's this game where Mario gets captured and Peach has to save him. And it's really fun, uh, really charming, very reminiscent of Yoshi's Island, actually, if any of you ever played that game. So, uh, yeah, I'm really digging this. Uh, I can't remember the name of the guys that did this. Is it on here somewhere? Um, I can't remember, but... Uh, that company is also known for making a series called The Legendary Starfy. There's like five of these bastards, but and this is the fifth one, and it was the only one released in English, which is kind of lame. But yeah, I played this game for a bit on my R4 card before, and just looking at it, it looks like that sort of like mega sort of utterly disgustingly cute sort of thing. You know, it kind of reminds me of Knights and Klonoa, actually. I don't, I don't know why. Just, like, those two franchises. So, I'll be sure to give this game a try. And it looks amazing. You know, it looks like that sort of charming thing. You know, just just like Super Princess Peach, for that matter. So, uh, yeah, it's still in its cellophane and it's an American copy as well. Was this even released in Europe? I actually doubt that, but yeah, what can you do? At least we can import them. Region free. We like that. I haven't made a video on region free and stuff in a while, have I? I'll have to think about that, but whatever. Um, what else we got here? Um, oh god, okay. As if talking about my sort of fascination as playing it as Princess Peach um, wasn't, um, you know, enough. Look what else I got. Uh, Hack Yuki. Um, what's the subtitle? Memories of the Shinsengumi. Now, for those of you who know what Hak who don't know what Hakyuki is, I don't want to tell you because I know what it is. Uh, I totally picked this up. Uh, again, it was because of Rising Star Games, one of my favorite publishers, and just the fact that a game like this came out over here is insane to me. I mean, I I found out that Axis Games. Uh, I'd published a few games on the PSP, but only in America. So it's clearly got its, its sort of fan base over here, you know? And, you know, I like visual novel games, so I figured, fuck it, let's give it a go. I mean, what could possibly go wrong in a game where you just constantly talk to hot guys and try to... Yeah. Oh, God, what am I doing? Um, but yeah, Hakuki, 
We'll see. I haven't played it yet. We'll see how that turns out. So, <laughs> right. What else we got here? Um, not much to say about this one. Haven't played it. Still in cellophane. Harvest Moon, Hero of Leaf Valley. Um, I thought I was pretty much done with buying Harvest Moon games. You know, I have a lot to catch up on in terms of Harvest Moon. That's for sure. Um, because I remember being told that uh, so many of the handheld games were apparently shit. You know, like all of them on the DS. But I heard this one was actually really good. Apparently it's quite hard, so maybe I'll leave this one to last, really. But I heard it was pretty good, you know? It's also the only Harvest Moon game I currently own that isn't on a Nintendo console, you know? Um, Harvest Moon has been primarily Nintendo-based for the most part. But they, they deviate to the other platforms every once in a while, so yeah. You really valley for the PSP. Um, cool. I like me some Harvest Moon. And lastly, we'll talk about these. Sonic Lost World for the Wii U and the 3DS. I gotta say, I'm really not digging the Wii U at the moment. It was doing good there for a while, you know, with Pikmin 3 and 101 and Wind Waker HD. You know, I was really digging it. But then fucking Mario and Sonic and Wii Party and this comes out and they were just so... Yeah, sort of games, you know, it was kind of gutting. So yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm not really a big fan of this. You know, I feel like I should do a whole video. Would you guys like me to do a whole video on this? Maybe like a... I don't know. Maybe even... If it's not just a plain review, maybe like a top 10 things wrong with Sonic Lost World. Because I'm pretty sure I could do that. And the 3DS version... It's funny, okay? Okay, here's the thing, right? Sonic Lost World for the Wii U. Within the first five minutes of me playing this, I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm not gonna like this, am I? But I beat it, okay? But within the first five minutes of playing Sonic Lost World, I'm like, oh my god, I love this. But I've yet to go back to it outside of my first sentence, so I don't know what that says about me. And this camera's about to run out of battery, so should I do a full video on Sonic? Let me know. Anyway, see you after, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>